Right, I've got myself a Milwaukee battery, five amp hour. It's been abused a little bit, as you can see by the, the rust. Uh, it belongs to a friend of mine. Doesn't matter how much you charge it, it only ever shows my little flashy light. So at first I thought, well, obviously it was the, uh, the batteries. So I've charged them all up. And uh, yeah, 3.9. See the batteries are fine. The actual uh, 20 volts. It's an M18 battery, so the 18 actually stand means 18 volts, but that's the the minimum value. Now, if for some reason any batteries are a bit low in voltage, you've got a choice. I've got something like this. It's a USB. Plugs into your USB bank. And then on each end you've got magnets. Just make sure you connect it up to the right end. And if it is uh, charging, that'll flash, but these are, this one's actually okay, as you can see. Alternatively, if you've got a bench power supply, some uh, crocodile clips with some magnets on the end and just stick one so there you go as the um, amperage goes down to zero as soon as it gets to zero that means the uh, it's reached the voltage you've set so there's something wrong with the board they tend to just pop I'm not quite sure what's actually wrong with it but if you look at how many little components it could be anything couldn't it so what I'm going to do is I'll whip this little screw out and then we'll fit a little replacement and this is a cheap copy from Amazon it's about 17 quid but if it works it's better than what does work Also, there's a screw hide in there. Okay, now, these are spot welded on there and over this side. I'm not gonna be spot welding anything. I'm just gonna solder stuff. You've got these sense lines that go between the batteries so we can work out whether or not the, like, certain packs are not charging properly. So we need to desolder that one, that one, that one, and that one. Destroy all that, or well, at least that bit from the original board, and then this should pop out. What I'm gonna be using, because you could use a, a standard soldering iron, and then either solder wick, uh, if you're gonna use solder wick, use a bit of a flux as well or one of those terrible plunger pen things but I've got a magic moving solder gun what it does it this end heats up and actually sucks air through the end so all you have to do is just place it over the, the solder joint give it a move around give it a little move See, it's taking the solder off. Now, the problem with lead free solder is uh, it's got a much higher melting point, so it can be a bit of an issue. If you have any problems with the uh, lead free solder from melting, what you can do is uh, heat up, add a bit of leaded solder, and that will re reduce the uh, melting point to make it easier to remove. that this board is knackered so you don't need to be too precious with it right I've cut the I think it's the positive connection that side 
negative connection that side. And now with both the screws out, it comes away. But I need to cut that tab back because it runs all the way across the back. Right, there you go, it's the other one. Dead now anyway. What I'm going to do is uh, tidy up these tabs where I've cut them off. If you notice the tabs that we've unsoldered, these ones here, they need to be okay because they need to go through the printed circuit board of the new one. And obviously that tab is already there, so we can lose that one and lose that one. Right, I just tore the old uh, tabs off. They only held on with two little spot welds, so just peeled it off like a fingernail. And I placed the new board in. So we've got the original tabs poking through. So we've got one, two, three, four to solder. But it's probably worth sticking the screws in, just hold it in place. All right, just to help it along. A little bit of flux. And the connections that you can solder just helps the solder flow better. And get yourself some lead solder, lead based, not just pure lead obviously. Clean your tip, no laughing at the back. Okay now, I do have a battery spot welder to do these but because you won't, I'll show you a different way of doing it. What you need to do is get yourself a razor blade, which I've definitely got somewhere. And you need to, these are really clean, clean up these areas. And what we're gonna do is throw in a little bit of solder. What you wanna do is just key the metal to make it easier to solder to, because there could be a coating on it. Flux. Down to flux in. Flux his brains out. Okay. So now the battery is fine, the board is fine. And we know it's charged up. So when we press this button, all four of those lights should uh, light up. There's not much I can do about the case though. It looks like it's been attached to the Milwaukee cow anus fisting machine. Now I'll give it a little clean up, but. Christ. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna give that a clean up. That's a rank. Yeah, that didn't clean up quite as I thought it would, but never mind. The screws, the ones at the front where the panel is, they're the long ones, and the well, you see that the long ones with poke out top, so the real ones are the short ones. Now, the issue being, and you either found this out when you remove them, is that they are Torx security bits, so they've got little dimple in them, so you've got to get one with a hole in the end. And this is a Torx 10. It's all screwed together. Just make out the red lights there. It's fine. Just a single red light means it's charging. So we'll leave that until it's uh, showing a green light. We're going to test it on a, a tall mic, sure it works. Green, sweet.
Well, it wasn't doing that before. So that is a fix. So if you've got one flashing light and it won't charge, even if you charge batteries, it still won't work, you need to replace the PCB. I'll put a link in the uh, description where I've got mine.